Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include Activision Blizzard's terrible quarterly results, Overwatch hitting record numbers on Twitch, what the Diablo 4 internal testing can mean, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the description below, but Right before you skip ahead, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted to new Saturday episodes and stay up to date with gaming news highlights. Now before I move on, just a quick word from this video's sponsor, Mir4, a cross-platform MMORPG from one of the biggest game companies in Korea, We Made, who's looking to revolutionize the MMORPG genre. Built on the Unreal Engine 4, Mir4 is set in a Far East, Wushu-style setting, which I'm a sucker for. I like that crouching tiger, hidden dragon stuff. And you get to experience the campy Wushu cinematic glory through the in-game cutscenes, and outside of the main storyline, there's a big open world to explore, find dungeons, forage and gather for crafting. There's currently five classes to pick from, each capturing different playstyles, with the latest class, the Arbalest dual-wielding one-handed crossbows, which obviously I had to pick. What was really cool was when I played the game on Twitch, I had viewers who had been fans of the game for months giving me beginner tips and guidance, and they were really hyped about the PvP game mode. And for those interested in that kind of stuff, you can even earn real-world rewards by conquering mines through in-game battles to obtain dark steel, an important crafting material. Now, the Western launch of the game got some mixed reviews, but the devs have been really trying to fix the problems and address the feedback. Mir 4 is available now on PC via Steam, Mac, and on mobile with full crossplay. And the devs are expanding their multiverse of games and even bringing the rewards into the real world. Follow the Mir 4 game category on Twitch and check it out yourself by clicking the link in the description. We'll kick things off with a viewer comment of the week. This one comes from Ali Atari on last week's video on the topic of in-game advertisements. And I just thought it was a funny comment. He said, quote, Imagine Deckard Kane saying, Stay a while and listen to our new product. You get 5% off. Wow, that would really kill the immersiveness of the game. I don't know, I, I think it would work great. Stay a while and save. As a token of my gratitude, I will identify rebates for you at no charge. Hmm. Regrettably, I could do nothing to prevent this coupon from expiring. You have quite a discount there in that Herodric cube. In our first quick bit of news, Bethesda has added five classic titles to Steam. The Elder Scrolls Arena, The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, An Elder Scrolls Legend Battlespire, and Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. One of these things is... not like the others. Some of these games are even available for free, at least as of the time of this recording. Wolfenstein, Arena, and Daggerfall. And this, of course, comes with the incoming closure of the Bethesda launcher, which will be dead as of May 11th. You can start transferring your games from the launcher to Steam as of now, but there's no rush to get it done before May 11th. You'll still be able to move your games over even after that point. Instructions in the links below. On to Activision Blizzard news. The company shared its latest quarterly financial report, and it's bad news all around. Both revenue and player numbers are down. The company has lost 60 million monthly active users in the past year, and that's primarily because of Call of Duty. This drop of 60 million represents a loss of about 15% of its monthly active users. For the Activision branch specifically, it was a drop of about 30%. Overall revenue for the company is down about 23% relative to the same period last year. Now, just to clarify on how Activision Blizzard counts monthly active users, if you as one person log into three different Activision Blizzard games in a month, you count as three monthly active users. So, if you're a Diablo and a WoW player, and you stop playing WoW but you keep playing Diablo, that's one less monthly active user for them. According to the company, Call of Duty Vanguard sold worse than the previous premium COD title, and Warzone, the free-to-play battle royale entry in the series, had lower engagement. Blizzard's numbers were down as well though, with revenue hitting its lowest point in the past eight years, basically right before Overwatch's launch. And monthly active users are down 19% since last year to 22 million. The third branch of Activision Blizzard, King, the developer of Candy Crush, they're doing just fine. Revenue is up 12% year over year. They're carrying the rest of the team. Now, an additional factor here that's worth noting is that the gaming industry saw a boom during lockdown. And now that lockdown's lifting, it's only natural that the bubble is bursting. You know, people want to go back outside and do stuff. Now, as for the Microsoft buyout of the company, that is continuing to proceed. The buyout has achieved stockholder approval with 98% of shares voting in favor. It does still need, however, to pass governmental 
approval. In other Blizzard news, the Overwatch 2 PvP beta kicked off this week, and this led to Overwatch seeing its highest viewer numbers on Twitch ever, with 1.5 million concurrent viewers. The beta, which is PC only, will run until May 17th-ish. It may be extended or cut short. The date's more of just a guideline. While the main selling feature of Overwatch 2 is the PvE mode, the campaign story mode, the beta is just for testing the PvP, which has brought the game from a 6v6 to a 5v5. This four new maps, one new hero to play, Sojourn, who we spoke about in a previous video, and there's also reworks to existing heroes. There's also a new game mode to test, Push, which is something of a reverse tug of war. You want to push a robot all the way back to your opponent's spawn. If you reach the end, you win. Otherwise, when the time runs out, the team whose spawn is furthest from the robot wins. You can sign up for a chance to get into the beta via the website opt-in, and you also have a chance to win a beta key by watching the opening weekend of Overwatch League, which is next weekend. Or if you don't want to watch, you can literally just send in an email asking to be included in the sweepstakes. Instructions on that in the description. In some quick last epoch news, in an interview this week, the devs revealed that multiplayer will definitely release this year with community testing starting soon. Last Epoch is a promising upcoming ARPG that's currently in early access, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for the release of multiplayer before diving back into it. And on to Diablo news, starting with Immortal. In case you missed the announcement, Immortal is coming to PC. Oh, and we also have a release date. On June 2nd, Immortal launches on mobile, and PC beta begins on the same day. But it's really just a soft launch for the PC version, because there will be no progress wipes, Crossplay will be enabled from the start, so you can seamlessly go from playing on your PC to picking up right where you left off on your mobile device when you step away from the computer. Now, something I want to clear up from the previous video I made about the PC announcement. On PC, you can play Immortal with WASD. That is, using WASD to move your character, which you can rebind to anything, to clarify. But you can also choose to play just by clicking like in a traditional Diablo game. So effectively, you have the choice to click to move or use keyboard commands to move in a given direction. And of course, you can also use a controller. Community lead Pez Radar also clarified why the Immortal announcement happened at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Since many people were theorizing it was because it was an Asian-friendly time, and so this was about marketing to Asia. The fact is that Activision Blizzard was releasing its regularly scheduled earnings report that morning at Market Open, in which they were discussing the release date of Immortal and PC version, and well, that would have kind of undercut their special reveal if the trailer came hours after the dry business report. In Diablo 4 news, we learned from that earnings report that the game has entered company-wide internal testing. Now, what does that mean for a release date? Well, we can't know anything for certain, of course, but we can go back a decade and look at what happened with Diablo 3. On May 9th, 2011, then-CEO Mike Morheim revealed during a quarterly earnings call that company-wide testing of D3 had begun the previous week. He added, quote, The game is looking great, and we are currently targeting a Q3 launch for external beta testing. He did not provide an estimated release date for the game, but D3 ended up releasing on May 15th, 2012, roughly one year after company-wide testing had begun. External testing for Diablo 3 began in Q3, as Morheim stated. That was September. Initially, it was limited to friends and family in early September, but that opened up to others by mid-September. So D3 released eight months after the start of beta. However, back at BlizzCon 2010, game director Jay Wilson said that Diablo 3 beta would likely start about six months before the game would release. Obviously, at this time in 2010, they didn't have any concrete plans, so what this says more so is that six months is an amount of time that they deemed sufficient to move from beta testing to release. Now, another consideration was that Diablo 3's release was delayed because of the auction house. In order to pass approvals in South Korea, the devs had to end up dropping the auction house from that region in order to pass approvals after some back and forth and holdups. So possibly, D3 would have launched six months instead of eight months after beta had started, if not for those delays. So where does that leave us today with Diablo 4? Well, if Diablo 3 is anything to go by, and Diablo 3 was released a decade ago, so things could have changed, but in theory, if we're going to go by that, then we could be seeing Diablo 4 around this time next year. And we could also, in theory, see a D4 beta 
before the end of this year. And in Diablo 2 Resurrected news, we got a patch this week before the ladder started that, among other things, added a tooltip to the Barbarian's Find Item skill that confirmed that a change that was noticed was not a bug, but rather an intended feature. A plus one synergy bonus from Find Potion. This means that when both are maxed out, Find Item will have an over 70% magic find bonus instead of just an over 50% bonus, which is quite substantial. This further boosts the Barbarian's reputation as the immortal magic find king. And the 2.4 ladder began this week. Be sure to check out all of our guide videos within our D2R YouTube playlist or on Riker.com, we have videos on leveling builds for every class, as well as a general speed leveling guide to get to 75 as fast as possible, a guide on the mercenary changes in 2.4, a video on the best builds of the ladder, and videos on how to farm all this gear that you'll need. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. But do be sure to have checked out last week's video in which we discussed how Microsoft and Sony are planning to insert ads in games. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content. You have quite a discount there in that Roderick Cube. Ow.